Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today we're back to working on this little uh, gear that we're making for the 1928 Austin cars. It's a timing gear that goes up on the camshaft and it will eventually be a helical or sometimes called spiral gear that we're gonna be cutting over on the horizontal milling machine. We made this from a casting and I've already got a video where we kind of roughed out our original piece here, our new piece that we're gonna make it from. Uh, but Today, today's project is gonna be all around broaching a keyway. And uh, the challenge with this particular broach job is, is normally it's not a big deal. You just have a little broach bush and you drop it in the hole, you use your broach, push it through over on the, uh, on a press and you're done. The problem I've got is that this hole in this particular item is a tapered hole. So to do that, we have to make a custom tapered broach bushing uh, to match the taper. You know, it's gonna look something like this great big one here, uh, but obviously not as large. It'll be tapered, and I have the slot in there that the broach will slide in, and uh, we can get that keyway broached out. So let's uh, head over to the lathe and uh, see if we can't start making this uh, tapered broach bushing. I'm over on the lathe. I just got a piece of one inch stock in here that we're gonna make this out. Right now, I'm just trying to make a taper that uh, is going to match the taper that's in the bore. And we're gonna start by just facing the front of this, just, uh, you know, just because probably really doesn't matter in this uh, case, but it's always good practice. So we're gonna do that. Now we're going to start cutting the taper on this, and uh, to do that, I've got my compound on my lathe here set to the taper that we're going to cut. We're going to be just using the compound. I could use the taper attachment for this, but because it's such a short distance, I just opted to go with the compound. Um, I will note that we set this uh, angle using the uh, camshaft that this mounts to, uh, that our gear mounts to on the lathe. And I did that in a previous video when we were setting up to actually bore. And basically we just put the camshaft in the lathe between centers and put an indicator on the compound and ran it back and forth until we got that indicator reading zero as it was sweeping across uh, the taper. Once we did that, the taper on the compound, the angle on the compound was set and uh, we're good to go. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in here and start working on cutting a taper. So as I'm cutting that, because it is a taper, that cut's getting lighter and lighter and eventually right along in here somewhere, we're just going to kind of run completely out. So I'm just going to keep feeding in on the cross slide and we'll continue cutting that taper until we get one that the gear will fit up on all the way. Uh, and then we'll have our taper that we can take to the middle machine and start working on getting the slot in it to use as a broach plug. Let's uh, do a little bit more turning here and we'll get the, uh, the taper set. I'm just gonna see kind of where we're at. I know that the uh, small end on the the gear is about 775. We're at about 875. So I got about 100 thousandths to go um, to get to where we need to be. Make a couple more passes here. Let's see, we should be getting close to that 775. We are, I want to do a quick test fit here. Now I zeroed my carriage on the DRO so that I can go back to the same place, uh, but I can move this out of my way for right now. And that's going up on there, just a little bit shy of going all the way through. So I'm gonna make one more pass and uh, we we'll, should be in good shape. So let me go back to my zero on the carriage here, which is about right there. And let's do about another, I don't know, 40 thousandths or so off the diameter. And I think we'll be in good shape. All right, 
think this will be good. Do another test fit here. And yeah, we're, we're in great shape there. With the taper cut on here, what I did was I slid my gear up on. I just took a Sharpie pen and kind of marked right there where the back end of it is uh, touching. So you, I got a clear indication on that taper, kind of the, the smallest diameter that's actually uh, coming into contact with the gear. And when we make our brooch bushing, again, this is kind of a just off the shelf commercially made brooch bushing. We got to put that slot in there. Now I've measured that slot. It's uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch wide and it is designed for the uh, brooch to just go into and it just guides that brooch. Now this brooch, the way it works is when it starts cutting, it just takes a small bite and as it slides up, it takes heavier and heavier bites until you get to whatever depth is cutting. A lot of times, and like with this one, you'll put a shim behind it and make a second pass. And uh, that will get you to the depth and kind of nibble out that uh, keyway that we need to do. So uh, again, 3 16 of an inch wide. And as far as how deep this needs to go, the depth of this one is a 3 eighths of an inch, 375 thousandths. And I did some checking and on this uh, small end, that's going to give us the full, the same depth of cut as this, uh, this one here. Now notice on the back side, it's not as deep, but again, the brooch or the, the keyway is straight, whereas the bore is tapered. So it's going to be smaller on one side, but we want to work off of this small side. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to the mill machine. We're going to set this up, put an end mill in there and we'll kind of set our zero whenever it first comes in contact with the taper right at that point. And we're just going to cut us a little slot in there, uh, three eighths of an inch deep, and then we'll cut this off and our brooch bushing should be ready to use. All right, let's go to the milling machine now and uh, we'll cut that slot in there. I got my work here mounted in the vise. I got two V blocks turned up on their side that captures the uh, rod, keeps everything at the same height, keeps it parallel to the machine and uh, does a good job of holding it in place. Now we need to cut that groove right down the center of the shaft. So uh, we've got the edge finder on here and we are going to come in here and find the edge on both sides and then calculate the center using the digital readout. So. All right, let's uh, find this first edge. We'll bring that in until that edge finder scoots over. Right there. Redo it. I'm going to zero my digital readout. We'll go to the other side. Do it once again, come into the part. All right, let's... right there. I use my half function to uh, find the center. So half of the distance, I basically measured from one side to the other using the same piece here. And then whatever measurement that is, we take half of it and that'll be the center. So I'll just dial this in now to zero on the digital readout, which is about right there. I'll lock my table in place. That's good. All right, let me change out, put a cutter in here and we'll make that groove. All right, we are in the center of the shaft. I have a 3 16 inch cutter in here, which is the size of the groove we need to cut. And it needs to go 3 eighths of an inch deep, starting right there where that line is. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and uh, start that cutter up. And I'm gonna start above it a little bit. See, it's starting to touch right in there. I don't want to go take too big of a bite. 
I'm just gonna mill up above where I know I need to be at. And I'm gonna take a little bit more here. Put the edge of the cutter right on that line. I'm gonna raise the table up right there is when it makes contact. That's my zero. I'm gonna zero out my depth of cut and I need to go three eighths of an inch deep from that spot. All right. Three eighths is 375 thou, so I'm just gonna probably do about 25 thou per pass here. I don't want to take too heavy of a cut. Break that in mill. And we're just gonna work down till we get to 375. About another 25 thou. I'm just going a, roughly a quarter of the turn of the crank handle. One full revolution is a hundred thousandths. So uh, when I get to my final measurements, I'll get my calipers out and get a better measurement. But for right now, we're just uh, roughing. So, all right, this will be about 75 thou on the depth. Gonna nibble this out. That's about two hundred thousandths on the depth. I'm gonna dial into my 375 right here. This should be my final pass. All right. Now I'm over at the marble saw and we're just gonna cut it off a little bit above that little collar. Uh, really doesn't matter how high. Just, uh, just as long as it's below the shoulder of that, uh, where the uh, end mill went. There we go. That should make our uh, approach pushing. So here we go. There is our tapered uh, brooch bushing. That's an original one. Came with the set for a, state, a straight bore, but uh, this is the one we just made. It will, uh, our brooch will come in the top and you can probably see there where, you know, it's, it's, it's to the center of the, the part. So it's kind of cut more in the bottom than the top, but that's just like the original is done. And this is a two pass brooch. So when you make the first pass, you put a shim in here and then you make a second pass on the shim. And then that'll be to final depth uh, when you push that through. And um, just to show it here, there's uh, the gear. And we put that in there. It comes out the bottom. The brooch is fully supported at all times. And uh, we'll push that through and brooch it. Now, um, I don't want to brooch it yet. I want to cut my um, my gear teeth first, uh, and the reason is is that it. I don't know if this is important or not, but we're gonna we're gonna take it into consideration. But I'm gonna get where the 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 tooth here, or the the key here, is in in the same position as 
the gear teeth up here. Uh, I'm not sure if that timing is gonna be important or not, uh, but it's fairly easy for me to do that. And it'll be easier to broach this after we have cut all of our, our gears, uh, because this is again a helical gear, it's at an angle. You know, it'd be kind of hard to figure out where you wanted to start and stop it and, and get it lined up right. So we, this will be the last step when we broach it. But I needed to make the broach bushing first because I've got to make an arbor to turn this on separately. And the arbor will require cutting some single point threads on it. And I'll have to turn my compound to do that. So I wanted to get all of the, the turning of this angle done over on the lathe before I change the setting of the compound. And basically it gets used for three things. It gets used to, to bore the hole. It gets used to make a matching broach bushing and then it will also be used to make a, a arbor that this will go up on that will have a nut that goes on the backside that will tighten it up and turn between centers or have a center in the end. And that's what we will turn the outside diameter of the gear on as well as uh, when we're cutting the teeth over on the dividing head, we'll use that as well. So there we go. We got our brooch bushing made and we will be, like I said, putting it in action uh, a little bit later on, but needed to go ahead and get that done. And very happy with how it turned out. Well, with that, one brooch bushing knocked out one step closer on this project. And uh, like I said, we'll be making the mandrel to turn this on, finish turning the uh, outside diameter, and then heading over to the horizontal milling machine to cut the uh, bevel gears, which I'm kind of looking forward to. Never done that before. It's going to be a fun little project. So, uh, but one step closer and uh, that's going to be a wrap for today. So guys, with that, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciate it. it helps out a lot with the channel analytics and algorithms on YouTube and all that. It's, uh, it's a big deal and we appreciate it when you do that. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button uh, as well as that bell icon if you want to get notifications when uh, new videos are posted. And uh, as always too, a big huge thank you to all my supporters out there that helped me out over on Patreon and PayPal and other places. Uh, we really couldn't do everything we do on, this, on the channel here uh, without all your help. So with that, guys, We'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.